Hello and welcome back to SAS Bootcamp week six, video seven. In this video, I am going to talk about applications of macros because uh, we spent a good bit of time talking about macro variables and macro statements and macro functions, macro logic. Um, I haven't had an opportunity to talk about how or where to apply these. So we'll talk about that and then I will cover the homework for this week. We don't have an exercise for this week, but I do have a homework. Uh, we'll talk about the homework um, and that will be all for this week's content. So let's first begin with the applications. Uh, as you can imagine by now, macros are super useful when you have a certain piece of code, whether that's a data step, a procedure, or something else that needs to be run over and over again with small tweaks. So if you've got, for example, you are running frequencies to identify, you're running a proc freak option to, write, to run frequencies, but for different variables. You can write your proc freak code within a macro statement and then use a parameter, which basically feeds into it the, the name of the variable, and then simply call on that macro multiple times every time you want to get a percentage, just like we've done um, over here, right? You can just feed the variable name into the macro, and that macro statement can be a proc freak, so it gives you a percentage. So you can do that over and over again. But that's really a more simple or a basic example. Uh, Within health services research, what I've used uh, macros for often is really, really long lines of code. So for example, if you are working in a huge data set where you are identifying patients with diabetes in one set of code, and then you want to turn it around, identify patients with hypertension, and then turn it around, identify patients with uh, a different disease area, and you want to do that over and over again, uh, it doesn't make sense to write one different data set and then do whatever you want to do with those patients with that disease. Uh, and copy and paste it once for hypertension, once for diabetes, once for uh, hypercholesterolemia, that just becomes too much code, right? And when you copy and paste code like that uh, and just change one or two things because you want to be efficient with your programming and not have to type code again repeatedly, you are likely to make errors. You might not change everything. You might have a typo in there. Uh, maybe you forgot to change the set statement. Maybe you forgot to change the data statement or something else, right? And you're likely to make errors. So. Whenever I know that there is a certain piece of code that I will have to execute repeatedly with minor tweaks, I will put that into a macro statement. And the way I do that is always, first I will write the code as if I'm writing a regular code. And once I've finished writing it, then I put it into a macro, and then change all of the variable names or values that I want to convert into macros into parameters, and then run the macro eventually. Right? And then I will compare uh, the output when looking at the file regularly versus when looking at it through the macro. Um, so obviously the first application is when some things need to be run over and over again, but that's not the only application of macros. You will find that macros are super, super useful when you are running code before you finalize what you want to do. So for example, you might be doing some programming right now on a project where you're working through this project and you're coding it, but you haven't quite decided if um, you are interested in individuals over the age of 25 or individuals over the age of 21, right? Uh, maybe you have eligibility criteria that are flexible and you don't know which one you will want to use until after you've finished all the programming and seen the results um, or seen your sample size, for example. If you are doing things like that, it makes sense to use a macro variable for the value 25 as opposed to just entering 25. And the advantage you get from doing that is that once you run all your code, let's say you want to change the eligibility criteria from 25 years to 21 years. Instead of identifying every single place where you've written 25 in the code, if you had used the macro variable, you just get to change the value 25 to 21 in the macro, and I write my macros at the very top of my code file, and I change that one place, and now the rest of my code runs perfectly well without me having to go read every single line of code to change the value 25 to 21, right? So you can be very efficient, and you can make your code flexible, uh, especially when you have flexible decision points in your research project, you can accomplish them using macros. Um, macros, macro variables particularly, are also super useful when you have code that needs to be changed at a moment's notice. Sometimes we are working on projects that are um, dynamic in the sense that these are projects that um, need to be run once a month to generate a new report. Or you might have projects where you run something in order to show a client or your faculty member or uh, whoever it is, right? You're running code uh, in order to produce an output, but let's say you need to change that on a moment's notice 
because once you want to do this and then you want to change something else and then you want to change something else uh, if you want to change things quickly going through every line of code on what is potentially thousands of lines of code you have in a project uh, is not very efficient instead if you enter those things in a macro variable uh, and then just change the value of that macro variable at the top of your code you can be very very efficient with how you do your programming if you do that um, finally using macros can also make your code shorter right so if you have a lot of code that you have to paste over and over again uh, using macros makes your code shorter which means debugging is easier which means you will you are less likely to make errors and if you do make an error you are hopefully going to be able to catch it using the m logic and m print options so all of those are valuable applications of macros but perhaps the most important macro application in fact uh, of all of the three or four years that I've been teaching this class, I know a lot of people that have learned macros and never used them. And you can get away with never using macros in most cases. But the one case that people will eventually find that they have to use macros is when they need to implement something that they cannot program themselves. This is really common in health outcomes research. You will want to do some statistical procedure or you will want to implement some technique that uh, Programming into SAS directly will just it's just too much effort and somebody's already done the work to create a macro for you And you want to be able to use that into your own code a common example of this is the gmatch macro So let me uh, I've provided the link to the gmatch macro from the Mayo website on your notes file I am going to show you guys what this looks like when I click on that link So this is what that link is uh, the gmatch macro pro is provided by the Mayo people and is really really popular right it has been around since 2004 as you can see if you click on that link uh, this link basically gives you a whole bunch of SAS code if you keep scrolling there is a lot of SAS code in here uh, why would you ever want to use a macro like this from the internet well so the gmatch macro is actually a really really useful macro uh, in most study designs within health outcomes research, you will find that you often need to do matching between two groups of individuals. These, this may be a case control study where you are matching cases to controls, or it may be a simple cohort study where you are matching individuals that perhaps uh, have the characteristic that you want to individuals that don't have that characteristic, whether that is treatment, whether that is a demographic variable, whatever it is. Matching is often a very important part of several uh, study designs within pharmacoepidemiology or general epidemiology. When you want to do matching, there are several ways to do that matching. One particular way that is uh, demonstrated to be efficient, that is demonstrated to give uh, accurate matching results is called the greedy match. The greedy match algorithm uh, is something that you can program yourself if you would like, but it is a lot of coding that you can just skip if you use the gmatch macro that Mayo provides for free on their website. So the link I gave to you guys on the notes file is basically to the gmatch macro so you just click on this macro and you get this little line of code and if you want to implement gmatch in your code file you just take this whole macro it's a lot of code you copy it i'm going to create a new code file to do this um, and you just paste that's it and you're done you've now incorporated the gmatch macro within your own code and if you want to know how to make this work simply read the instructions they provide you most of these publicly available macros give very detailed and thorough instructions so for example this will tell you what does the macro function do how does it work how does the greedy algorithm work and then it actually gives you the call statement so uh, the macro actually uh, all of this is a comment as you can see it is green in color um, the macro doesn't actually start up until here. This is where the macro definition begins. So it says percent macro, the name of the macro is gmatch, and these are all the parameters within that macro. It has a data parameter, a group parameter, ID, MVARS, weights, dmaxk, dmax, distribution, so on and so forth. And uh, at the very end of the code, you'll see that uh, the code actually ends with a percent men statement. Uh, and when you do percent mend, you can actually uh, repeat the name of the macro one more time. You don't have to do this. Uh, it's just good practice to do this. Just so that uh, when you're looking at the code, you know what um, what code is being run and what, uh, what uh, macro is being executed. So 
once you've written a code like this, you just copy paste it and then read the instructions for how to use this. So it tells you, this is the call statement, percent match, percent G match, and then write values for each of these things. And it will tell you that data is the SAS data set containing cases and potential controls. So you take the SAS data set that you are interested in running this GMatch macro on and enter it right there in your call statement. And then group is the SAS variable defining cases, group equals one if case, zero if control, that's what you enter over there, right? Similarly, just follow the instructions here and you can do the greedy match algorithm in your own code uh, without having to rewrite all of these lines of SAS code. So it's a really useful way to implement complicated procedures within your SAS code. I'm going to run this and I'm going to use the test data example that they provided as part of the GMatch macro on the Mayo website. Let me remove these comments. So they are producing a data set, uh, a fake data set that has a few of the variables that we need to do. I'm not going to go over the details of what is in there, but they've produced a fake data set. And, and they are using this fake data set into the data parameter within the GMatch macro, right? So they are calling the GMatch macro here and uh, they are implementing parameters a little differently from what I showed in my previous video where they've said data equals fake reg. The way I showed, you just write fake reg and, and it would work and that still works. You can use either option. Uh, doing it this way makes those parameters more explicit if you will. Uh, so it is useful when you are using macros that come from the internet that you don't know or might not be comfortable using. Um, as per the instructions in this example, they've already filled in all these parameter values. So I'm not going to worry about it. I'm just going to hit run to see if it works. And you'll see this is actually a long piece of code. So it ran the whole thing. And then it created, it did the matching for me. It matched one group of cases to a group of controls and it gave me my output data sets, right? So learning macros and learning how to use macros uh, is really simple. What, it, where it gets really helpful is when you learn to apply it using things like GMAT, this macro that you can find on the internet on the Mayo website or other macros like it, for example. Uh, within your own code as well, Applying macros can make coding very, very efficient. And uh, it really takes your pro SAS programming skills to the next level. So I'm going to leave applications of macros there. And we're going to switch gears now and talk about homework for this week. Okay. So here is the homework for this week. This week's homework really takes things up a notch. Um, I wanted to make sure that the last homework that we have in the SAS bootcamp, because remember, this is it. Next week, there are not going to be any homeworks. Next week, we are just going to discuss the class project. So for the last homework of the SAS bootcamp, I wanted to give you guys basically the experience of what it would be like to do a full health outcomes research study. So I've created fake data sets and I am giving you guys aims which would look like a simple health outcomes research study that you have to implement. And I'm not going to tell you how to do this project. You decide how you want to make this work. All you need to do is answer the research question, right? So in this case, the research question that you are trying to answer is, are healthcare costs dependent on gender among patients with type two diabetes mellitus? So what you want to know is among patients that have diabetes, do males have higher costs or do females have higher costs? That's the research question. So this is a simple health outcomes research study that you might conduct if you were working on a real project. Uh, you're gonna use the files, Benny underscore visit, patient underscore info, rx underscore claims and ndc underscore fad 690. All of these are files that we've already worked on in earlier weeks in the SAS bootcamp. I've actually added a few variables to these files and I'll go over them in a second uh, in order to make sure that um, you can complete this homework for this week of class. Uh, while conducting this project, there are a few things you need to be aware of. First, there are eligibility criteria. You are only allowed to include individuals that meet the following criteria. They have to be, individuals have to be eligible for all seven months of the study period, which you can identify from the patient underscore info file. And individuals have to be diagnosed during a hospital visit with uh, diabetes mellitus. Uh, so I've mentioned here within parentheses that you should look in the Benny underscore visit file, which is the file of hospitalizations to see if patients have diabetes or not. 
the outcome variable we are interested in is the cost variable. You should obtain cost variable from sum of all prescription costs, which you get from the Rx claims file, and hospitalizations costs, which you get from the Benny visit file. The little trick here is that the Rx claims file does not actually have costs. The NDC underscore FAD 690 file has costs in an AWP variable. And so you need to link your Rx claims file to the NDC claim, NDC underscore FAD 690 file based on the NDC code variable and then obtain those AWP variable, which is going to be your prescription costs. You also have to add hospitalization costs and you can get that from the Benny underscore visit file. Once you've calculated the outcome variable for your eligible population, you then have to do a simple statistical analysis, which I'm asking you to do as t-test, um, comparing males and females to look at their mean costs. Um, this is the statistical analysis required here is not exactly the most robust way, or actually even the right way to analyze costs, but let's just assume this is what you need to do. If you were working on a real project, you would use a generalized linear model with probably um, gamma regression or something else like that, but I'm, that's just beyond the scope of this boot camp. So all I'm asking you to do is to run a simple t-test and independent sample t-test comparing the cost between males and females. Uh, I've also provided a hint. You will know you have the correct answer at the end of this exercise. If you find that the average cost for males is $5,997.40 and for females is 5666.90. Um, any which way you can get to this output, it's fine. Uh, I am not going to tell you how you need to get there. You need to use those files to find your own path to the solution. So if you don't have access to this notes file, please pause the video at this point, take a screenshot as you work on it. All the files have been uploaded to SAS Studio, so you should have access to them anyway. Um, I'm going to switch gears, go back into SAS Studio and show you these files really quickly so you have an understanding of what you need to do. So let me go to my class library. Um, I will begin with the patient info file. So in order to complete this homework, you need to use the patient info file. The patient info file has Benny ID for 18 individuals and their gender. That gender variable is important because eventually at the end, you are going to be doing a t-test across the gender variable. Um, it also has the eligibility variables for seven months and only individuals that are eligible for all seven months should be included in your final analysis. Uh, next, I'm going to show you guys the Benny underscore visit data set. This data set is a data set of all hospitalizations for an individual. So for example, individual one was hospitalized on 26th February, again on 13th August, again on 24th December. Individual two was never hospitalized. Individual three was hospitalized on these dates and so on and so forth. But for each hospitalization, there is a cost variable. So that tells you how much the hospitalization costs. That goes into your outcome. There are also 10 variables called dx underscore one through dx underscore 10. Right? Uh, not every one of these variables has a certain value in it, but uh, these are basically values where the hospital can enter what diseases the patient has been diagnosed with. So for example, patient number one, for their first hospitalization, was diagnosed, was hospitalized for sickle cell anemia, diabetes, hypertension, and appendicitis. For their second hospitalization, patient number one was, was hospitalized for sickle cell anemia and hypertension. Patient number one was also hospitalized again in December for diabetes. Patient number three was hospitalized for diabetes the first time, second time for hypertension and hypertension. Uh, I've got repeats in there. If we truly were working off of a real file, it would have slight nuances in what degree or complications of hypertension are available in the data. For now, just they've been uh, just assume that they've been hospitalized for hypertension and hypertension. It just means hypertension. Uh, ignore the repetition. Repetition is what I'm trying to say. Um, so on and so forth. So we've got hospitalization data, including diagnosis information and cost information in this file. So you need to find out a way to identify all the diabetes patients using this data set. And then for those diabetes patients, you need to take into account all of their expenses due to hospitalization. The next file you'll use is the Rx claims file. Again, this is a file you've seen earlier in the bootcamp where there's a Benny ID date. Every time they went to the pharmacy, this is the fill date, how many days of supply they got. And then I've added a new variable to this data set, which gives you the NDC code. The NDC code tells you what medication they filled on, the, on that date that they went to the pharmacy. Right? Uh, you're going to use this information to identify prescription costs. 
but prescription cost is actually not in this data set directly. Instead, what you're going to do is you're going to use the NDC underscore code variable to open up or merge with the NDC underscore FAD 690 file. Right? This file, which we've seen again earlier in the bootcamp, has the NDC code variable right here as the first column. And it also has the AWP column, which we've used in the previous exercise, which tells you what is the cost of that NDC. So you're going to use this data set to identify cost for each NDC. You're going to merge it back with the Rx claims file to identify all prescription related costs for your eligible population. So the goal of the exercise is to take your eligible population, which is continuously eligible individuals that have diabetes, and then you're going to calculate all of their costs, the hospitalization costs and prescription drug costs. And then you're going to run a simple t-test to do your statistical analysis comparing males and females on their healthcare costs. That completes the homework for week six of the SAS bootcamp. If you've stayed in here for this long, congratulations. I will also thank you and I hope this bootcamp has been helpful for you so far. In next week, we will actually work on the class project itself. But I will also see you on Friday of this week where we will go over this bootcamp. Uh, so if you have any questions before then, please send them to me over Twitter or over email. Uh, and I will discuss them on our usual time on Friday.